This is Twit. Hey, folks, I'm Frederick Van Johnson. This is part two of an interview with David Vaskovich. He is the founder of a company slash software called Mylio. In the first part of this interview, we talked about kind of the history of Mylio, what it's for, who it's targeted at, and the problems that it is seeking to solve, and the fact that it's peer-to-peer software versus peer-to-cloud to peer. So if you want to hear more about that, go back to that first interview. You'll find that on the page with this interview interview or on our YouTube channel. But without further delay, let's hand the mic over to Mr. Dave Vaskovich, who's going to take us into the Mylio software. David, you have the microphone. Hello. Okay. Well, uh, since this is a follow on to a podcast, I'm going to jump right into the demo. And if you can see my screen, this is what we call the life calendar, which for me is one of the central views in Mylio. When I started the company, I did a roadshow to raise money. And a lot of people, because I take, uh, you know, I go on photography trips and have pictures hanging on the wall and yada, 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 think we built this product for uh, serious photographers. But the central picture, central slide in the roadshow was a grandfather, very recognizably a grandfather, with two of his grandkids. And they're asking him a question like, Uh, Grandpa, what did your first house look like? And so that's, it's all about memories. And so when I talk about a calendar, there are no dentist appointments in here. You know, it's uh, no school meetings. But if we look, so we're in a view called decades view, which is kind of an unusual view, and I'll explain it in a minute. But there are these events here that are might be a little bit hard to read at a distance. They're meant to be read close up, like on a computer or an iPad. <coughs> and this is the unveiling of my mother's tombstone. And there's the event. Now, I have um, ratings turned on, and I'm going to turn them off because uh, it's just easier. The pictures will all look better if I, I'm going to leave dates. No, I'm going to leave that. Okay, uh, that's good. Okay, so there we see pictures from the unveiling of my mother's tombstone. And um, now if we drop in a level, this looks more like a calendar. Here are the months. Now we were in October. So here's another event from October. So uh, there's a guy, the first guy I ever worked for in 1971. He was a professor at the University of Toronto back then. He's now retired. I was in Toronto. He lives in Ottawa. There's a city in the middle called Kingston. And uh, we got together and met. So there we are. Now, okay, who's that fourth guy? Gee, uh, okay, let's go up here. Oh, it's Steve Gribble. Because Mylio has face tagging. It recognizes faces. And when I took this picture, even though I hadn't seen Steve Gribble in decades, Mylio recognized his face. So I didn't have to do anything. So this is me. I'm the shortest one. um, And I'm wearing the nicest shoes. This is my friend who I've had the longest. He will always remind me he's not my oldest friend. And uh, there's the professor that I worked for in 1971. So, okay. So now if we go back and let's drill into that month we are in October. Now it really looks like a calendar. And here's what I did while I was in Toronto. And one of my favorite restaurants in Toronto, it's a little bit out of the way, but it's called FK Kitchen. And even right this minute, even though I've done this demo before, I actually did one today, I can never remember the name of the chef, but I don't have to because Mylio does for me. Even though I hadn't seen him since before COVID, it's Frank Parhisgar, and there is even a spelling is correct. Okay, so that's kind of uh, like a calendar, kind of like you think a calendar is, but what about this decades view? So the reason I have a decades view will start scrolling back. This is my life. And when I do this, as I start to go back in history, around now people start to wonder how old I really am because these are pretty early years, but it doesn't go back to when I was born. It goes back to when my mother was born. 1923. And then if we go a little bit farther forward, there's a picture of my mother sledding taken in 1934. 
There's the picture. And Miley recognized her, even though she looks way different at this age than she did in, let's say, her 90s or her 70s or even her 60s or 40s. And here's the thing. So why does Milio exist? It is a photo organizer. That's not why it exists. Think about, um, you know, anybody who's even a teenager today, <clears throat> certainly anybody who's an adult today. Now, digital pictures really only became prevalent around 2010 when the iPhone was introduced. <clears throat> so all the history from before 2010 is all analog and if you get given a bunch of old pictures like this you're going to not know when they were taken you're not going to know who the people in the pictures are like you wouldn't know that this was my mother if you didn't have Milio to help you and if you didn't have something like this that can tell you who it is <clears throat> so this is about changing the way the world remembers now here's another thing fuzzy dates like, my mother knew that this picture was taken when she was 11. And since we know when she was born, um, we know this picture was taken in 1934. And Google Photos would want you to put in year, month, day, hour, minute, second. Okay, what day of the month was this picture taken? Do you think anybody knows? No. Do you think the person who might know if they if there were such a person is even still alive today for a picture taken in 1934? Nobody knows. And I don't want to put in a fake year, month, day, hour, minute, second. I want to say winter 1934. And Milio is the only product that I know of that allows you to work with fuzzy dates like that. The day, the month, the season, the year. Yeah. So if we keep going forward... Um, there's my mother motorcycling on the beach in 1947, like who would have guessed? Good for her. 1952, David's born. <clears throat> there's a picture of me as a baby. Look at that. Uh, now, that particular picture, we even know the time. But there's a lot of other pictures where we know the day. Or the season, like here's one taken in the fall of 1952. You know, we don't know when. How do we know it's the fall because of the trees? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there are little heuristics like that you can use to figure it out. Okay, so now if we keep going forward. Okay, now something really interesting is going to enter the picture. There's a story part that's interesting. It's more interesting, but the other part's interesting too. The story part is that my father died in a plane crash when I was 13. And um, so that was the big event of the year for me. Uh, pictures aren't very interesting because there were no survivors. What? Uh, okay. Um, but so there are some web clips. Boeing sent an engineer to the crash site. He wrote a trip report. And he typed it on a typewriter, and then years later, he found it in a filing cabinet, scanned it, turned it into a PDF, put the correct date and the title on it, and sent it to surviving families. My sister sent it to me. I got it as an attachment, and in two keystrokes with the share framework, sent it to Milio and forgot about it. And then I was on a plane, and I wanted to read it, and I had no internet. It didn't matter. There it is. Now, here's the thing about this. You know, I used to tell people, because I think of Milio as my second brain. Everything's in my Milio. Every presentation I've ever done, every contract I've ever signed. But when I tell people that if I start with Milio does photos and documents, they immediately assume that because we do documents, we must not do a very good job with photos. So I don't start there. But when I get here, when I tell them that we do photos because we want to change the way the world remembers, everybody gets that. And then when I get here and say, you know what? This is a document. Why is it not an important memory? I've never had anybody tell me that it's not an important memory, that it's not as important as all the rest of the memories. Right. Notice, by the way, that these items all have a fuzzy date, which is a day, but there's no timestamp. Because we know the day was the day the plane crashed. Wow. Okay. 
So now if we keep going forward, um, there's more pictures, and we'll see more documents, like my daughter's report cards from 1995. Why are these not important memories? Um, so, and then if you ask me the first time I went to Africa, okay, all of these items, pictures, documents, videos, they're all stored in the file system on your computer where they'll be safe. And um, so now they're stored in the file system on your computer. And um, what was I about to say? Uh, sometimes, even though I have a well thought out folder hierarchy, I still am not quite sure where to go to find like where were where are the pictures from the first trip to Africa. The calendar is the best friend of the folder system. Because there's the trip. It was in 2002, so I can tell you when it was. So there is the first picture. Now, this is set up to play it as a slideshow. I'm going to stop the slideshow. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, let's go back here. Okay, I don't want to run it as a slideshow. So if I... Let's see if I can stop it as a slideshow. I don't even know how to... Okay. Uh, okay, good. Nope. Um, whoops, it's taking me back. That's a bug. Okay, let's take another one. Uh, here's an event. It's not a slideshow. I can say, show this to me in the folder that it's stored in. And now I'm in the folder system. So that's a folder. That's the name of the folder. That folder is in another folder. These are family members, murderers. That folder is in a folder called family, which is in a folder called show, and that's my top level folder system. So if we go into show and look at what else is in show, for example, uh, trips is in show, and then if we look, here's Africa trips, and then there's that trip that we were looking at before, and then there's subfolders. There's Cape Town, Victoria Falls. It's really the folder system. Okay, so uh, in the interest of time, let's look at a couple of other things. So we saw the calendar. We saw that we have folders. Um, slow today. Come on. Wake up. Oh, that was weird. All the places I've been. Oh, oh we wow. have to scroll a little to see them all. Okay, now, so you, um, we were talking about this guy, Rich Harrington, right? Yeah. I typed in Harrington because I'm lazy. I didn't type his first name. I hit return. Two seconds later, there's all the places I've been with Rich. Oh, very good. Or I go over here, and I told you I grew up in Toronto. So places that I have pictures from in Toronto, there's a lot of them. Oh, and that's fast, too. Like, how cool is that? Yeah, it's performance. It's all local, not dependent on the cloud. Okay, so now um, let's go back to uh, folders. Let's turn off uh, the filter. And let's go up to the top. Actually, it doesn't matter where we are. So, for example, I'm on a street corner, and I'm taking pictures with my RX-10 camera. And somehow it stops focusing, and I want, I don't know what to do, and I'm in Istanbul, and I have no data connectivity. So I type in RX10, which is the name of the camera. Whoops, what happened there? RX10. Hit return, half a second later, literally. There's the manual for the camera, and three minutes later, I've solved the problem. Or... What's my blood type? Red Cross. There's my Red Cross card. Oh, wow. So here, so before you continue, Debbie, here's, a, here's a, a quick question on just how this fits in. There's two questions, two parts. So number one, can this, can Mylio plug into an existing workflow? So if I have photos in cool. different places already, are you proposing that we replace that with Mylio? Um, or add Mylio to, to the mix? And then secondly, are you looking at Mylio as kind of a, with this document, um, optical character recognition and all that, and the facial recognition, are we looking at Mylio as kind of the next iteration of something like Evernote? 
Okay, you've got two different questions there, so I'll do them one at a time. Okay. So it depends on your workflow. For many workflows, Mylio fits in. Uh, for example, um, when I'm looking at a picture and I want to edit it in Photoshop, I just say edit it in Photoshop from Mylio and do some work. And then when I'm done, I close it. It goes back into my Mylio. So let's say I'm doing that at home and then I didn't finish. And then I have my notebook computer and I get in the plane and I do the same thing. I pick up right where I left off. Okay. So we have we have users who uh, like uh, Matthew Jordan Smith and Dan Cox both use DXO extensively. So Mylio is a hub in two senses of the word. It's a hub when you're consolidating. All of your pictures can come together into Mylio. It's also a hub with all your different products. So, for example, uh, when I'm going to work in a document, um, I go into Mylio and then I open the document and I'm in Word. Or if it's a presentation, I'm in PowerPoint. Or if I want to create, okay, here's one that I do all the time. I take a bunch of pictures with my one of my phones, and I'm it's a panorama, but I'm, you know, not a pan. I mean, it's a, where I took separate pictures, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm sitting, I'm lying in bed, or I'm sitting somewhere, and I've got my iPad. And then from Mylio, I open Affinity Photo and create the panorama. But then the panorama ends up back in Mylio. Which is now accessible for many other of the other devices that you have connected to Mylio. Very good. Right. So then I can be on my computer and go from Mylio to Photoshop. And then when I'm done, I can go from Mylio and embed it in a Word document. And then that also goes back into Mylio. And now I have a, you know, a blog report on Iceland, which includes the panorama. Hmm. Very good. So okay. Mylio can, like I have a friend, I spent Christmas with a friend in Hawaii who has hundreds of thousands of pictures and he's a devoted Lightroom user. But he was telling me, he said, I can't live without Mylio because Mylio is, he said, it really has changed the way I remember. And it's how I keep everything in one place and I have everything with me all the time. You know, he says, I'll be out somewhere. Uh, like he has a friend who lives in a part of Maui that has no cell service and they wanted to look up a picture. But because he has Mylio, all of his pictures are on his phone and his tablet and his computer and he can get it anything, anytime. But it doesn't mean that he's not still a devoted Lightroom user. Interesting. So you can't so plug it in. It can replace or that. be be an augmentation. It could be a replacement or yeah. an addition. So for high end for high end users, Mylio has the potential to make your workflow better. So we once did a presentation for some people at Canon, and after we got through it. The guy said, well, unfortunately, you need workflow to take pictures, but Mylio makes it become fun flow. But for a lot of, uh, so I, I think the world breaks into three broad bands. At the bottom, the by far the largest band is two or three billion people who take pictures and don't want to spend any time doing anything with them, but they don't want to lose them. And so for them, Google or Apple is a good solution. Mm -hmm. And at the top, are probably a couple of million users who subscribe to the Adobe Photography Plan or they use DXO or maybe Capture One. And those people spend a lot of time in their pictures. But in the middle are literally a couple of hundred million people who care. They're like family memorists, they're travelers. They might use a point and shoot camera. They might not have a camera. And so for them, Mylio becomes their workflow. Because for them, it's a very complete solution. It has pretty good editing. It handles raw. It protects their pictures so they don't have to worry about doing backup. They can work in their pictures even when they're on trips and have limited connectivity. And uh, all their pictures are with them all the time everywhere. So that was your first question. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first one. And then the second the second one was the... Um, Evernote. Let me Evernote show you one and thing and then I'll answer. Yeah, let me show you one thing that leads to the answer about Evernote, okay? okay. And, okay, I want to show you two things. First of all, before I say that, I want to show you, we should not, if you promise not to forget what I'm about to show you, then I'll answer that question about Evernote. And what I'm going to show you is this. Um, so, you know, I always tell people that if they use Mylio, they're going to discover pictures they didn't even know they had. 
And my oldest memory of my father is me and him on a beach about an hour north of Toronto. And when we did our launch at Photo Plus, Scott Kelby was the featured speaker. A lot of your users will know who Scott Kelby is. And he was very emotional when he got there. And I asked him why. And he discovered a picture that meant a lot to him on a plane. And then he was in tears. And I thought, okay, this really happened, but it hasn't happened to me yet. And then I'm on a plane and I'm going through old pictures. So, and like I say, I don't, I didn't know at the time whether this picture of my father and me on the beach was a constructed memory or real, if you know what I mean. So here's yeah. me, my sister, my mother, there's me, my father and my sister, there's my father, there's the three of us on a beach actually in Israel. I don't know why this is there, but it's a picture of a lizard. <laughs> there's a picture of my kids. There's the memory. Wow. Okay, we can't let go of the fact that this, for me, to a large extent, this defines why we built Mylio. And the fact that I'm about to show you an additional broader use for Mylio can't take away from this. It doesn't make it less of a memory product. It doesn't make it less of a photo product. Okay? Mm hmm Okay. Now, I have this problem that I can never keep up with my reading. And so um, what I used to do is I would sit in my office and I would tear pages out of magazines, I would make copies of articles, and then when I got in a plane, I would measure the success of the trip by how much lighter the bag was at the end of the trip versus the beginning. <laughs> okay. And then, and then um, Dropbox and the iPad came out at the same time, and I started putting articles in the iPad, and there are two problems. One, Dropbox doesn't actually store the articles in the iPad. It stores a pointer because there isn't enough space usually. They assume there isn't enough space. So I'd get in a plane that never had internet and I couldn't read the articles. And I didn't really want to see a file explorer type interface. You know what that looks like, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So in Mylia, this is my reading pile. Now, you know, you talk about Evernote. I used to use Evernote, and I don't anymore because it's all in Mylio. Like I already showed you, I can type in Red Cross, and there it is. Now, let's say, you know, like there's, I already showed you my camera manual. Every manual is in here. Let's say I'm interested in the Spanner database. It's a sort of technical topic, but there's a folder on it. And if I go to here, it'll show me every, every, uh, Every item I have that mentions the word spanner. You know, this particular one, Life Beyond Distributed Transactions, almost certainly mentions the spanner database, and it's somewhere in here, and that's why it showed up. This one, it's in the title. So um, everything is in here. Uh, trip itineraries, like, you know, um, and it's all there on all my devices. Uh, I can find any search I do. Like, okay, just a second. We're going to do this one again. Okay, I want you to time it. Tell me when you're ready. Whoops, okay. I typed it wrong. You can't be ready yet. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. I, yeah, okay, I typed it right. Whoops, I typed wrong. Okay, let's try it again. I'm going to type it in from scratch. Oh. Okay, one, two, three... Oh, there's a lot more red crosses this time. Last time I got the folder. Oh, that was that a, was half a second. You can't yeah, time that, a half a second. Yeah, that was nothing. That was that was as quick as you hit the button, it was back. Yeah. I mean that search that I did to find places that where it was Rich Harrington and me, that took almost two seconds, which is slow for my later. That one you could time, maybe. Wow. So yeah, I mean this is in a way, it's my second brain. It's what Evernote would have become if it had continued evolving, except it also has all my emotional memories, all, you know, the structure of my life, because it has all the pictures. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, so to get it, it's just at mylio.com. Go grab the, go grab it and play with it. So you have to, you, so you're installing a mylio client on all of the devices that you want to point you want to be in this sort of friendly group of of doc or or devices that have access to the documents right yeah so it could go one of two ways if you're an individual 
<clears throat> you install it on your phone, your tablet, your computers. It works on Mac OS, Windows, Android, and iOS, and iPad OS. I mean, everywhere mm -hmm. you might ever want to be. If you're <clears throat> a team, then all the members of the team run MyLeo, and then they can share information with each other wherever they are. Excellent. What about what about um, backing up, or is there a concept of backing up? I guess yes. you're, you're you're automatically backed up, or can you plug a drive in there to have everything well, just better. sort of safeguarded? Yeah. So here here it is. Um, so Milio handles pictures in three sizes: originals, magic miniatures, and thumbnails. So. When it comes to originals, uh, we recommend that you designate one or more computers. We recommend more than one as what we call a vault. Now, it's just a designation. But when you tell Milio that a machine it has to have enough storage as a vault, that Milio will make sure that that machine gets a copy of every original. Automatically, you don't have to do anything. Hmm. So when you take a picture with your iPhone, the original will make its way to the vault. When you do a share framework and put a document onto your notebook computer, the original will make its way to the vault. When you take a picture with the camera and load those pictures into your laptop computer on a trip with your card reader, the original will make its way to the vault. And can I have more now, than one vault? Yes, that's my next point. Excellent. We recommend that you have at least three vaults in at least two locations. So the vaults will keep each other up to date. So I had a case where I had, uh, this is a little technical, I had a RAID 10 array. And uh, RAID 10, uh, you can lose two drives unless they're the wrong two drives. I lost the wrong two drives. So I lost my whole RAID array. It mm -hmm. didn't matter. I didn't worry about it. I didn't. All I did was I replaced the two drives and Milio reinstalled, recopied all the pictures. And it takes quite a while if you're starting from scratch, but it was not something I worried about. And a couple of days later, I was back to where I was before. It's all automatic. <clears throat> so, David, this is the last question here. Uh, what happens if. You know, I'm a pro. I know people that are listening or watching to this are saying, well, you know what? I got 40 terabytes of images I've been shooting since the Cretaceous period. How are that? How is that data going to fit on my phone? Like, how does how does okay, that so, work? OK, so there's first of all. If you have more than about two terabytes of photos, 40 certainly is more than two. We're the only game in town. Like, if you decide I want to put 10 terabytes into Apple Photos, sorry, Apple won't sell you 10 terabytes of storage. Now, Google will. It's really expensive, and it's incredibly slow getting it up there. So we have users with uh, 30, 40, 50 terabytes of storage. Matthew Jordan Smith, who you said you just interviewed, has over 4 million pictures in Milio. We have over 50 people with over a million pictures in Milio. Hmm. Okay, now, if you have 4 million pictures, okay, so I said we have three sizes of pictures. We have originals. You certainly are not storing 40 terabytes of originals anywhere except a vault. Okay, certainly not on a one terabyte phone or a two terabyte iPad. Mm -hmm. You, If you have 4 million pictures, even a one terabyte iPad won't have enough space for all the magic miniatures. However... Uh, that's where we got the thumbnails. The reason for thumbnails is so that Milio keeps track of all your pictures and you can at least see which one you're talking about if you need to find one. And so 10 million pictures take 10 gigabytes. There's oh, nobody who doesn't have 10 gigabytes of storage. That's your yeah. catalog. Yeah. And then if, if there are three things that are true about a thumbnail, A, um, it's definitely recognizable. If I showed you a picture of me as a thumbnail when you met me, you'd know who I was. It's definitely pixelated on any screen bigger than a phone, and it can't be edited. It's, you know, it's just a, it's, it's to have a little library finder. Now, what you do if you have that many pictures is you put your phone into what's called automatic mode. 
And then Miley uses a series of uh, rules, including some machine learning based rules to figure out which pictures you want to have magic miniatures for. And for the rest, you'll have thumbnails. But here's the good part. If you go to a picture that's only there in thumbnail form, this is the other benefit of the magic miniatures being so small. If you have an internet connection, Milio will fetch the magic miniature for you automatically. Hmm. Typically about a second, even okay. over the internet. Okay. So, yeah, so let's say most of your pictures are just going to be there in preview form, because remember, there is enough room for five or 600,000 pictures. And then the rest of your pictures, if you go into a folder that you don't normally look at, and you haven't been there for a long time, as you go through it, the first picture will look pixelated and then it won't. And then Miley will say, wait, you're in this folder. You probably want to keep looking at pictures and you won't even see a delay for the rest of the pictures. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Good. So no disruption. It's not, it doesn't sound like if you wanted to add Milio to your existing setup that you're going to have to, okay, I got to copy all this over here and move this over there nope. and disrupt. Nope. You just point it and say that hierarchy of images needs to be everywhere. And then Milio does the rest. It makes your magic mini yep. miniatures, your, your thumbnails, etc. And all you have to do is install Milio on all the devices. Correct. Yeah, I'm going to, this is a good way to wrap up. Let me first of all expand a little on your point. This is another difference between us and everybody else. <coughs> Milio works with your pictures wherever they are. So if they're in a folder, you point Milio at the folder and then it catalogs the pictures, but it doesn't move them. So if that's also the folder where Lightroom or Photoshop works with your pictures, fine, leave them there and keep working with them that way. So that's the first thing. So there's no copying and so on. And then they're everywhere. So everything, everywhere, always, always means that they're protected. And it also means with or without an internet connection. And then the reason to have that is so we can change the way you remember. And um, I, you know, uh, yeah, one, so, yeah, I, I mean, I could keep going on, but this that's a good stopping point. So That's uh, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I wrote this down when you were talking. Uh, changing the way the world remembers. Is that your tagline for, for Milio? Because yes. if that's it is. Mission, that's our mission statement. It's not our tagline. The, but the mission statement, which if you come to the company office, it's there on the wall, changing the way the world remembers. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It definitely makes sense. And when you put it in context of, the, you know, comparison to other solutions gone by, like Evernote and what you kind of roll your own services, Google Drive or Dropbox, et cetera, this is, this is kind of like that, but not with a layer of intelligence on top of it so that it's doing the right thing and gets out of your way. Because I like a service like this, I want it out of my way. I want it to work. Yeah. I want it to be great. And when I need to look at it and find a photo, I want to be able to find it. I don't want to spend time learning and doing all this stuff. I just want it to be the perfect traffic cop. Um, and that sounds yeah. like what, what you guys are doing to, to reduce the time between me and finding that memory, right? Yep. Cool. Okay, cool. I'm going to say we should wrap. It's uh, four o'clock. We've been at it for an hour and a half. I've loved it. And uh, let me know how it comes out. I will. So let's sign off with the, um, with, and I'll edit this. I'm going to edit this piece. So let's just sign off with you just saying, Hey, go try out my, the call to action, go try out my Leo. This is where you go 30 day free trial, et cetera. Okay. So, um, I hope you've all enjoyed seeing my demo. And if you listen to the part before my podcast and what would make me the happiest is if all of you try and then use Milio. So if you're on a computer, go to www.milio.com where you can learn a lot about the product anyways. We have forums and help. If you're on a phone or a tablet, go to either the Apple Store and look up Milio or the Google Play Store and look up Milio. And if you have a problem or you just want a question or you just want to let me know what you think, my email is david at milio.com. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you that you're using Milio and that you love it as much as I do, or at least close. All right, Dave Vaskovich, thank you, sir. And you have a good rest of your day. This is Twitter.